excuse us, Christina. Sorry for coming in so suddenly. It's just that Mary's sick. She can't breathe anymore. Let's take her inside. Let her rest. Come in. She needs Andrew. He has to visit her straight away. He's not here. He left this morning and he hasn't come back yet. Can't you get in touch with him? Please. I don't know where he is. see this. He would be proud of you. Mm. Yes, Dad would. At least he would. You're thinking about your wife, am I correct? She doesn't know I bought this studio. Don't think about it. I see. Very well, then. If he does come, please tell him to call. Thank you. And just not at the clinic, and no one can tell me where I can find him. Her attack is stronger than usual. What, what are we going to do? Wait a minute. feel good with you. So easy. I'm surprised at how close I feel to you. And I'm even more surprised that I'm not afraid of telling you. Does that scare you? No. I'm very pleased. Perhaps that's what's scary. I, well to cause you any problems. It's just, I told you because. Yes, there are choices that have to be made. And Christina should know about it. I'm sure that neither she would want a marriage based on lies. What do you mean? I think it's better if we divorce. Where have you been? I need to speak to you. Now is not the time. Andrew, we look everywhere for you. What's going on here? Mary has just had a respiratory crisis. She's seriously ill. Has to be hospitalized immediately. Where are you taking her? To Stillman's clinic. Are you crazy? I work in that clinic. Stillman's come up with a perfect pneumothorax therapy. Little Mary is not going to that quack, Denny. Not when I can take advantage of the best clinic in London. <sighs> come, sweetheart. <coughs> oh, we go, darling. Ah. 
I can do nothing else but confirm your diagnosis, Dr. Manson. Then again, I had no doubts. I suggest a pneumothorax. Oh, I don't trust these experimental techniques. And I'm not for taking risks, and we are safer with traditional expectorants. They have always worked, and uh, we'll keep her under observation. What's to observe? The situation is clear, right? Only a pneumothorax can cure her. Perhaps it's best we continue our consultation somewhere else. I think so, too. Go, go. We're one too many here, I believe. You can go and see Mary now, Owen. Oh, good. Thank you. Will they give her the treatment Denny was talking about? For now, she's under observation, and then we'll see. Thank you. Mary Owen? Pneumothorax is still going through an experimental phase. I don't deny its validity, but... But it makes people heal too quickly, whereas people should pay for long periods of stay in hospital. Am I right? Ivory doesn't want money. Not from me and not from Owen. You're being silly. But he doesn't want to create a precedent. That's his strategy. It's just a matter of interests. All these people think only about money. Andrew, wake up. Denny, Stillman's brainwashing you. You've become very prejudiced as of late. No, sensible. You know very well that George Stillman's practice is illegal. And if you work with him, you'll be struck from the medical association. What are you talking about, Andrew? I don't get you. You lived a life of hell in the name of research, and now you give me the runaround. What's going on? Yes, a life of hell. So why not take a little bit of paradise? We deserve it. By the way, I almost forgot this is the 5,000 pounds that you lent me. The check was ready, was just waiting to see you. You know what, Andrew? This money is different from the money I lent you. I don't want it. Denny. Denny. Mary's under control. Don't worry. You wanted to talk to me, didn't you? I'm listening. I suppose there's no hiding that... that lately... We even have difficulty being civil with each other. Every little thing is contested, censured, argued. I, I sense this tension, this something that's standing between us. 
Something? Or someone? Which of the two? You didn't answer my question. I don't want to lower myself to your level. <laughs> With your Christophers. Anyway, if it were true, if it were true, it's only your fault. You make my life impossible. You criticize everything I do. The moment I leave this house, I'm respected and admired. But when I return, I'm truly sick of this situation. I'm tired too, Andrew. I'm tired of your being gone. I'm tired of your behavior. I'm, yes, I'm nervous because you do everything to push me away. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm ready to start everything from the beginning, but I need to see the man that I want. Christina, not again. You're being childish. Things change, we change. We're not puppets. Can't you get that into your head? But you're not giving me any choice like this. Do you understand that? We can't go on like this. I know. It's probably best we make a decision. You've already made the decision, haven't you? Have you decided to leave me? Would it be easier if I were to leave? Excuse me, Sir Christopher. Yes, Sylvie? A lady at the door, sir. She has your private card. Did she tell you her name? Christina Barlow, sir. Let her in immediately and tell them not to pass any more phone calls. I don't want to be disturbed for any reason. Sir. Sorry for not giving you any warning. What happened? Help me. I need you. Thank you. Sorry for pouring my heart out to you, but... but I really needed to talk to a friend. You did well. But now you have to tell me something in all honesty. You still love him, don't you? I love the man that I met in Abelor. 
The one who saved a baby with the strength of his desperation. Who used to risk his own life to save the miners. <coughs> I will always love that man. For the rest of my life. Has he changed that much? Sometimes it's as if I don't even recognize his voice, his brow. What do you do now? I just feel like running away. I want to get out of his life. I don't know what I will do. Maybe I'll take a room in a guest house. I cannot let you do that. Stay here. I have to leave for a few days. At least you'll be safe here. And you can calmly think about what and what not to do. I don't Please. think... Please, Sylvie will be here. She's a nice woman. She'll look after you. I told you, Andrew, the situation is stationary. We have to wait for the therapy to work. Sorry for interfering, but she seems worse to me. Everything will be all right. Don't worry. If anything, we can increase the dose of expectorants. Go right ahead if you think it'll help. But let's hurry up. We have to finish our rounds. I'm in your hands, Andrew. Don't worry. Have faith, girl. Have faith. So you've decided to go away? Did I have a choice? I never thought we'd get to this point. You should have. Christina, I think that... What? You need money? I'll give you some, it's no problem. You said it. It's no problem. How's that? Money, money, money. It's all you think about now. No, I'm thinking of you. What do you do without money? Don't worry, I don't need anything. At least tell me where you're going. I have the right to know. I'm going to Christopher's house. He's putting me up. should have known. First you play the neglected wife, and then suddenly the truth. You two couldn't wait to get back together. Who knows how many times you met behind my back? Not everyone acts like you, Andrew. Maybe it looks strange to you, but that's the way it is. Anyway, Christopher is putting me up as a friend, nothing else. I'm sure. The true gentleman. How long before he chases you out again? You're not even worthy of mentioning his name. Nor he mine. Go! Go and cry on his shoulder!
to Andrew Manson and to his new consultancy. And to an even brighter future. As he deserves, I would add. Your oh. new quarters are just marvellous. I will tell all my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Ivory. Be careful with the girlfriends. Don't tell me you're jealous. I'd be capable of killing if another woman were to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you speak with Christina? We're divorcing as soon as possible. Oh, darling. I'll look for a suitable flat in this area, but we should talk first, don't you think? Do you want me to help you find a house? What? I think we should find a nice place for the two of us. At this point, it doesn't make sense for you and I... Oh, don't misunderstand me. You know how close I feel to you. You're part of me, part of my life. But what? There's obviously a but. It, it's so rushed. Oh, we go well together, darling. We can see each other whenever we want. And we never get bored. I didn't ask you to marry me. But it's the same thing, darling. Living under the same roof can be fatal, you know that. It, it kills the mystery. I have my quirks and habits, and I'm sure you have yours. Why ruin everything? Miss Lawrence, did I interrupt? I saw you, and I wanted to tell you how marvelous you were. Oh, thank you. I'm in a bit way. I've seen all your shows. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, more champagne? Why not? So you're a fan of mine? <laughs> An assiduous one. It's the third time I've seen you in the Lady Windermere's fan, with new subtleties each time. Thank you. Just the thought of it makes me nauseous. Oh. Dr. Manson! Dr. Manson! Thank God you're here. Please come quickly. My wife is sick. I'll be right with you. Wait for the doctor. Here, doctor. Thank you. All right. Easy. Open your arms, Maria. Stay calm. I have to feel where it hurts you. Tell me when it hurts. Here? No. Here? Stay like this. Don't move. Is it serious? She has appendicitis. Yes, it is serious. Listen, there's no, no time to waste. We operate now, she'll be all right, but we have no time to lose. Yes, she needs an appendectomy, simple surgery. We'll operate her straight away then. No, I prefer tomorrow, to be honest. Might risk a peritonitis, I wouldn't. No. Dr. Manson, I have a few guineas set aside, but uh, I don't know if it's enough for such an operation. We'll make sure it's enough? Of course. So we operate tonight. 
Heads up, Maria, huh? Yeah, she's a toughie. Dr. Ivory, I want to thank you for your kind cooperation. Yes, but you know, for an operation of that, that sort, you could have taken her to any hospital. But I work in this hospital. I know, but today's a terrible day, and I have a hernia to operate in one hour. He's an important customer, bank director. You're putting me in a difficult position with your doing good. If you're worried about the fees, I'll pay them. <sighs> Listen to me, Andrew. This time, I'll do as you ask me. But in the future, let's try to agree about things, hmm? And uh, as far as the clientele you bring here, please, try to make a better selection, mulatto woman. <laughs> Come on, get ready. If we also have to operate his friend, we've no time to lose. How do you feel, love? I feel better now. Especially when you're next to me. <laughs> I love it when you're looking at me like this. It reminds me when we met in St. Andrews. <laughs> After three months at sea, I ran like a deer to the first pub that I could find. <laughs> Papa, Papa didn't want me to serve you. He didn't trust the English sailors. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man was right. Seeing as how I snucked you away. Hmm? I'm glad you did. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if... if we go back to St. Andrews one day? My father would be so happy. Great. And me too. Then it's a promise. Give me time and I'll save. All right, here we go. We'll put you to sleep and then operate. I have faith in you, Dr. Manson. Good. Parker? The patient is asleep. We can start now. Good. I will make an incision on the abdomen now. Scalpel. Retractor. Oh, it's as I thought. Peritonitis has set in. We've caught it in time. There's little pus here. Now, let's remove what we have to. Doctor, be careful. You're, you're too close to the abdominal artery. Please, Manson, I know what I'm doing. We have to tamp on the blood. I can't see the artery, if it's been severed or not. Don't make me lose time now. I'm almost finished. Careful, Ivory. <gasps> oh, Christ, you've severed it! Compress, compress, get out of the way. Move, move! Damnation! Tamp on, quickly, tamp on! We're flooded here. Parker, how's she doing? I can't stop the hemorrhaging. What? Well? Compress, quickly. Dr. Ivory. We're losing her. Resist, resist. Repeat it to Dr. Manson. Compress this quickly, please. It's all a blur. I, 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 can't, I can't stop it. Oh. Andrew. Yes? Andrew. Andrew, we've lost her. There's nothing more you can do. In fact, all we can do now is sober up and clean the room for the next operation. And this was a surgery shock for sure. Something that couldn't have been foreseen. Right, Dr. Parker? I don't know. Maybe we could... No. It is so. However painful these things are, even for our own sake, Andrew, 
One must get used to it. It's a dark side of our profession. Get rid of her! What sort of a doctor are you? Stop it, Andrew. Stop, Stop it. it! I want to kill him with my bare hands! The filthy murderer! He's hysterical, doesn't know what he's saying. I know exactly what I'm saying! You're a butcher! Keep your voice down, you're scaring everybody. Everyone has to hear me! You're not worthy of wearing that white coat! Stop it, Manson! I won't take such offence. What's worse? Is that no better than he is? I've never seen you like this before, Andrew. She and her husband trusted me. What can I tell him now? That poor man. <laughs> I can talk to him if you want me to. Margaret, you'll ruin us. Us? From this moment, my life is separate from yours. But if you wish to avoid a public scandal, write at once to this woman and tell her that I forbid her to come here. I will not. I cannot. She must come. Then I will do exactly as I have said. You leave me no choice. Margaret! Margaret! <gasps> Darling, you're soaking God, wet. What are you doing I here? Do? I need to talk to you. I haven't much time, but come with me. I dare not tell her who this woman really is. The shame would kill her. <laughs> you may go, Connie. Call me when it's time. <laughs> to you, darling. Your face is so... And your hand. Did you hurt yourself? I'm an accomplice to a murder. What are you talking about? 
We killed a woman. She died during an operation. <gasps> you gave me such a fright. But I am sorry, though. It wasn't a difficult operation. She shouldn't have died. I can't forgive myself. It's as if... As if I killed her with my own hands. Oh, don't be silly. This isn't the first or last time someone dies during an operation. Someone? Her name was Maria. She and her husband were my friends. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here in London. Andrew, a doctor should never deal with people he knows personally. You know that. It's a serious problem if you can't be detached while you're working. Detached? I've been in that face for too long. What have I become now, Francis? What has my life become? Oh, uh, but don't take it too hard, so. It's not worth it. We we all make mistakes sometimes. Oh, what are you blathering? You're deriding a person. A person who died. You've just one minute, madam. Um, Andrew, it's unfortunate, but these things do happen. You just have to get used to it. Ivory told me the same thing. There, you see. Just stop worrying about it. Frankly, I wasn't expecting the same words from you. Why not? I was right, and I, well, I agree with him. I don't. I don't agree anymore. Madam, you're on. I must go. Please wait for me. We'll continue later. I have nothing more to say. Going ever better, madam. Thank you, Connie. And Dr. Manson? I didn't see him.
Andrew. Sorry calling you at this time. I need to ask you a favor. Andrew, she's not doing well at all from what I can tell. Don't worry. We'll take her away from here. Dr. Manson, what a pleasure to see you again. I just visited our dear Mary. I have noticed that she's slightly better. I believe she's worsened. Sister Marjorie, please prepare the papers for my patient's release. Beg pardon? Immediately. What makes you think that I will authorize her discharge, Dr. Manson? I don't need your authorization. She's under my responsibility. In that case, do as you please, but don't come back to this clinic. Indeed, a great incentive to proceed immediately. Andrew, I don't want to be causing you trouble. You aren't. We're taking her to Stillman's and see what he can do. Stillman? <laughs> Did I hear correctly? You're running a risk, you are. You'll be struck from the order working with such people. And the murderers? Whom they let pass as doctors? How do they account for them? Watch what you're saying. You could end up regretting it. Like regretting having worked here? I save you from poverty, Manson. Don't forget that. As I said, working here was the biggest mistake of my life. <coughs> so we're going, Andrew? Certainly. We'll let them leave, Doctor. Damn right you'll let us leave, eh, Mary? <laughs> Why not? Prepare the documents for the discharge. Hallelujah. <laughs> there you go, Mary. Welcome back. Did you have a good trip? I couldn't wait to get back. You took to gardening, I see, with great results. At least you weren't bored. <laughs> Didn't have time to get bored with all these bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. And have you thought about what you want to do now? I have to tell you something very important. Did you see Andrew again? I'm expecting a baby. Almost all of the infected serum has been drawn out. Fill two vials of this contraption. Okay, Denny, take the needle out. Got it. It went. It went well, I'd say. The beauty of this method is that it gives you a certain amount of immediate results. I'm optimistic. Aren't you, Professor Manson? I can only tell you I am totally amazed by your inventiveness. It is an honor to see you operate, Dr. Stillman. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Never claim to be. I just have a few good notions of biophysics. Dr. Stillman. One has to gain his merits with credibility, as you do. Without it, he's lost, as I know. What you said is to your credit, Dr. Manson. Not everyone has the courage to admit to his errors, to his distractions. Now I begin to see why Denny has always admired you so much. You have to tell him. You're obliged to do so, Christina. I can't go back to him. I don't want to. You have to do it for your child. I don't feel up to it. I can't. No one is forcing you to go back to your husband. But no matter what he did to you, he has the legal right to know that you're expecting his child. I am expecting a child from a man who's no longer there, who no longer cares. 
Andrew has changed. He's no longer what he used to be. Becoming a father may convince him to rethink things and make him go back to being the person you so loved, whom you'll never forget. How can you say that? You of all people. You don't know what I would give to say the opposite. To find the strength to push you away from him. Forever. Wouldn't it be better if I took you all the way home? You mustn't strain, right? I'd rather get off here. It's just a few steps. I need to walk a little bit, just to relax. And to find the courage to speak to him. Let me know how it goes then, as soon as you can. Is anybody here? Arthur, what's happened? You don't know? No, about what? Maria is dead. Oh, it's impossible. Well, you should ask your husband. What? I don't understand. Well, then obviously he didn't tell you or thought better of it. I haven't seen him in a long time. I'm not surprised. It's a simple operation, they said. No problems. We placed our trust in them and, in short, they killed her on the operating table. My poor Maria. Something unforeseen must have happened. It's impossible. What did Andrew say? Uh, he didn't even have the courage to tell me. He just went away.
You can get dressed. I'm worse now, aren't I? How many injection cycles do I have to keep on doing? <laughs> None. Excuse me. You're as sound as a bell, Miss Everett. But if you want to squander more on useless therapies, you're free to do so. But don't count on me. But I'm... You take some nice long walks. You'll feel much better. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've already stolen enough money from you. Can I at least come back here once in a while for a checkup? I'm sorry, Miss Everett, but you're the last patient. As of this moment, this surgery shall be permanently closed. Farewell, sister. to see you. Yes, you're right. Maybe I owe you an explanation. I don't need explanations. I know where I went wrong. And I also know that I can't give you up. I'm ready to follow you wherever you go. There's no future for us, Francis. You're a fine actress who's never sought another life while I went astray. My outlook is different. I made mistakes. And I have to start again from scratch. How do you know it's different? I'm sure that if we... Francis, please. I love Christina. And now... I have lost her forever. I will never be able to fill the void of her absence. Of her devotion. Never. Never again. I... I always believed that I was in love with love. But I suppose that can be until love has a face, a name. And now, for me, love is your face, your name. And nothing will ever be the same. No one will ever take your place, Andrew. Files of my anthracite dust project. <laughs> There's dust on them too. Should go back to Abelor, to the miners, to continue my research and to treat them properly. Yeah, and give Chenkin a return match. I think it's a great idea. I made them a promise. I have to keep it. I can start from where I left off, Denny. We can start again from here. I'm going to be breathing down your neck this time. You're the only true friend I have. Yeah, like old times, right? Uh, not quite like old times, Denny. Not at all, as a matter of fact. Speak to Christina, look for her. Tell her what happened. I'm sure that she... Denny, what right can I have after what I did to her? Come on. Everyone makes mistakes. I made too many. Christopher. I wanted to know how, how you were feeling. <laughs> you look well. I'm trying to cope as best I can. Why the suitcase? I'm leaving. London is not for me. Nor for my child. You're being hasty. I could guarantee him a better future. I would be like a father for him. A 
that for me? What would you be for me? Hmm. It's not as if I'm asking you to stay with me. Let's give it some time. I'm going back to Blainley. I've made up my mind. You mustn't worry about me. I'll go back to teaching. I'll be fine. You'll see. I'm prepared to do everything for my child. It's too early to see the first effects of the anthracite. Just as well. I have to run to Stillman. Cyrus? Sorry for intruding, but I need to speak to you. It's urgent. I presume you were leaving, Dr. Hook. <laughs> what intuition? How did you guess? Are you in a particular hurry, Doctor? I don't know why, but I feel like staying a little longer. Ivory intends to file a lawsuit against you with the Medical Association for taking the patient Mary Owen to Stillman's. And if he does so, you'll be struck off. Andrew, you're still in time. Go to Ivory. Say you're sorry, say you didn't mean it, and, and then... Forget it. That pompous, inept deceiver should thank me for not filing a lawsuit against him. He caused Maria's death. If that deceiver files a lawsuit against you, your career is over. And I'm telling you, I'll be forced to take his side. I cannot do otherwise. Of course, your famous career. You can despise the life that I lead all you want, but it's my life. And I wouldn't give it up for anything in this whole world. Not even for a friend, believe me. I'm sure. Good luck, Andrew. Ah, he won't file a lawsuit. Ivory's a coward, and he has a dirty conscience. She's almost completely recovered. Yes, uh, in fact, I think she could go back within a couple of days at the most. I hope you do make good use of my pneumothorax machine in Aberlaw. So Danny told you about our project? That's why I gave him the machine. I'm very enthusiastic. I will give you all the support you need. Thank you. You're very kind, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Stone. Andrew. I was wondering when. Read this. Andrew Manson and Dennis Hope? Yes. Come in, please.
Come forward, please. The Disciplinary Council is filing against Andrew Manson and Dennis Hope for the following reasons. On the 30th of September, 1928, you acted as assistants to a certain George Stillman, willingly, knowing that the latter is not a registered doctor and that he practices with no authorization from the medical order. Thus, ipso facto, you also took part in unaccepted practices. Consequently, you are guilty of slandering the medical professional ethic. The council proposes that you be struck from the medical order. You will be informed of the day the hearing will take place, during which time you will have the opportunity to speak in your defense. That'll be all. We have to find a barrister, the best. We can give him plenty to work on in our defense. We won't let them win. Once the medical order decides, that's it. With little hope. Don't fool yourself. What's happened to you? You gave up all of a sudden. I was really hoping on going to Abrilor with you and carrying on that research together. We'll do it. We'll do that too, Denny. But now it's important that you react in order to win. Yeah. We'll give each other the strength to see it through. Yeah. Perhaps it might be better if I go back home and clear my thoughts. I'll take you there. Oh, no. no. I'd rather be alone for a while. I'll take a walk. All right. See you tomorrow. I can only be a doctor, Andrew. I couldn't be anything else. I know. You're a born doctor. you have, sir? Uh, beer? Ale? Scotch? Yeah, nice one. Tough day, huh? That's for sure. I would say we have earned a good dinner at the Savoy. I definitely second them. Why didn't you take it out on me? Get you your dirty hands off me! What are you doing? Silly what did you have to do with it? You conniving fake, you! You filthy murderer! Is anyone home? You called, sir? The bottle is finished. It's enough, sir. You had enough. Yeah? I don't think so. I do. Go home, please. Are you striking me off, too? Must be an obsession. <laughs> You've had enough, sir. Come on. You don't know how long it's been since I last had a drink. Almost two years. Without ever having one drop. And now those sods come out of the blue and tell me that I can't do my job 
anymore. So I think that I'm the one to decide if I can drink and if I can work. So... I'm having another bottle. <coughs> That's enough now. Get out. Go on, out. Out. Shame on you. A pub is a sacred place. You can't bounce an innocent patron. I don't bounce people. I'm a doctor. I cure people. <laughs> what the hell? Mind how you drive. receive punishment for his misdeeds, but be united to the ranks of the faithful, so that in heaven he may have fellowship with the choirs of angels. Through Christ our Lord, may he rest in peace. Amen. I, um, I thought you would like to have Danny's personal effects. And these are his certificates and medical degrees. Mm. Not only in medicine. Had a degree in physics. And didn't tell anyone. Not even me. I can tell you what he told me. That he loved you like a brother. And I assume that's vice versa. Yes. Thank you. As far as the hearing is concerned, I was given the name of a very good barrister. Doesn't change anything. You can't let them win. Nor can I make them lose. 
You have to do it for Denny Andrew. If you can manage to have the request for your being struck off rejected, it's as if you had won on his behalf, too. You're in trouble, Dr. Manson. In cases like yours, being struck off is almost automatic. But he saved my daughter. She recovered completely. I feel that having Stillman's testimony could be useful in making the court understand. No, you mustn't even think that, Dr. Manson. Stillman's presence in the courtroom would be taken as a challenge. It's not a good approach, I assure you. Is it your intention to keep working as a doctor? It would change our approach, if otherwise. I feel it's my duty out of respect for a friend. And there's a promise that I made to the miners that I want to keep. It's the only motivation, the only thing keeping me alive at this moment. But I can assure you that I will manage to avoid your being struck off. But you'll have to do as I say. Never mention Stillman's name. Never contradict the court. Trust me. You must have a dignified but humble attitude. What I mean is that everyone has to understand that you're aware of being in the wrong. Adding that you are truly sorry and promise that such an unfortunate incident will not happen again. Unfortunate? But I would do it a thousand times again. You're asking me to lie. You must control your temper, Dr. Manson. Is that clear? If you can't accept my line of thinking, sir, I won't go any further. It's a lost cause, and there's no defense. No one's more frustrated than a barrister, sir. But I've learned to adapt. It is hard to accept, yes. And I understand your, your bitterness, your anger. But there's no other way to leave that courtroom. Still holding your doctor's degree. One last consideration, Mr. President. Let's not forget that we're dealing here with a doctor in medicine, Andrew Manson, who cooperated with a certain George Stillman, a so-called healer, a dilettante with no formal schooling whatsoever, who comes from the faraway lands of America and who has the pretense of teaching the art of medicine to the highly recognized and distinguished physicians of the United Kingdom. And what does Dr. Manson do? Instead of inviting such a person to go back to the Redskins, he joins him in a lawless, makeshift, unauthorized clinic, thus putting a young, helpless girl into his hands after taking her from Dr. Ivory's McGrief Clinic of world renown. I should think that alone is cause enough to be struck from the medical association. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally believe so. And I'm sure you distinguished colleagues believe so too. Yes. Silence! Oh, this is not a courthouse. You are not authorized to carry on with such unacceptable ruckus. Let us hear the barrister, in defense of Dr. Mans. <clears throat> Mr. President and honored members of the council, I have no intention of arguing against the accusations that have been made towards my client. The facts are clear, and Dr. Manson himself has no intention of denying such facts. <laughs> Furthermore, he requests that my person represent him in expressing his sorrow for having breached the canons of medical ethics, for sidestepping correct procedures. <laughs> However, I would like you to take into consideration a few extenuating circumstances. There is a deep and true friendship between Professor Manson and Mary Owen, and this is the reason why he was extraordinarily concerned for her health. One could say that he was emotionally involved, thus acting impulsively, without thinking. And we could add, also prompted by a feeling of trust in a colleague who was, unfortunately, close to Stillman. 
Oh, come, Mr. Hopper, give us a few names. Are you referring to Dr. Dennis Hope? Uh, I... Dr. Hope, not being present, I'd rather not go into details. It's not the case, sir. I would also rather place a veil of mercy over Dr. Hope, who is absent because tragic death suddenly took him away from the judgment of this council, entrusting him to a much more illuminated one, I'm sure. But his cooperation with Stillman had been going on for months, on a daily basis, thus causing a precedent nigh unknown in this country. Yes. It is a real embarrassment for any doctor worthy of his title. That's enough. I was trying to provoke you on purpose. Don't play his game. That's all juice. What were you saying, Dr. Manson? Nothing, dear colleague, nothing. I was under the impression that he has something to say. Uh, my client has nothing to say. I said I... I've had enough. For God's sake, Doctor. Dennis Hope was one of the best doctors I've ever had the fortune to meet. No, he's certainly the best doctor. Because he lives and will live in every country hospital, in every surgery, that has a doctor with the same light in his eyes. The doctor is ready to give up his life, every ounce of his metal to cure those in need, without expecting anything in return. Just the self-awareness of having done his duty. That's who Dr. Denny Hope was. And no one, no one in this room has the right to, to judge a man like him. I owe a lot to him. And I thank him. I will thank him forever for his integrity, strength of character, his professional insight, perceptiveness, and what is more, I thank Mr. Stillman. Yes, a man of progress, not of titles. Little Mary Owen, affected with severe pulmonary tuberculosis. Her case history, it's available to everyone. Her condition was so severe, she had little chance of survival. Mary Owen is there. Among us, gentlemen. As you can see, George Stillman did no harm to sweet Mary Owen, but cured her at once with his pneumothorax therapy. I was there. Dr. Hope was assisting. As we all know, professions are disciplined and bound to rules, behavior, and ethics. But the Hippocratic Oath we doctors take compels us to aid our patients as best we can, with passion and compassion, putting their health before anything else, even the rules. It was my duty to take Mary to Stillman. He cured her and no one else. What did it matter if Stillman didn't have a degree in medicine? What bristles here is that he can do his job better than a lot of other people who pride themselves on high-sounding titles and virtuous degrees. How dare you? You're saying that a degree in medicine doesn't mean anything? I never said that. Have you heard of Louis Pasteur? Oh, of course. Who hasn't heard of him? Dr. Pasteur is of worldwide fame. Pasteur didn't have a degree in medicine. Didn't you know? But that's not the point. We're discussing whether or not I'm to be struck off by the Medical Association. Well, yes. I deserve to be struck off, but not for what I have been accused. I deserve to be struck off for having betrayed my profession, my integrity, my values. I neglected patients who really needed me. 
in search of higher paying patients. I virtually stopped being a doctor when I gave more importance to my ease, my vanity, yes. I betrayed my ideals, and in a sense, I betrayed myself. With a long list of losses, my patients, my friends, and the person dearest and closest to my heart. I don't know if I'll ever be worthy of wearing a doctor's coat again. But if I am, it will only be to honor the memory and example of a man like Dr. Dennis Hope. Adjourns for deliberation. Very impudent, Dr. Manson, but deep down I admire you. It was good of you to speak your mind. They deserved what they got. Thank you. Thank you. you again. I, I wasn't wrong. I felt your presence. I knew you'd be there. And I always will be there. No matter what happens. him off after what he said, it will be a disaster for us. People like Stillman and Manson will be able to act as they please. I know, unfortunately. But what can we do at this point? I have an idea. An operation. On a certain money of listened, a severed artery. He took over, but couldn't stop the hemorrhaging and lost control. They won't strike you off. You'll see. You can start all over again. Like you promised, Denny. I would like to go back to Abelor to finish my research. If you agree. Oh, nothing could make me happier. The council is now in session. No matter what.
Dr. Manson, after attentive deliberation, the disciplinary council has accepted your argumentation and self-criticism with great merit and positiveness. However, we've learned of other circumstances that would uh, give a darker view of your competence, of your instinct of correctness, thus reopening this proceeding. Silence. Dr. Cornell. Dr. Manson. On the 28th of September, 1928, at the McGreef Clinic, you operated on a certain Maria Blissett for a simple appendectomy. Now, we know that Mrs. Blissett died during that operation, owing to your incompetence and the unjustified haste with which you were operating. Do you confirm these facts? Silence! Silence! Quiet! Answer, Dr. Manson. Do you feel responsible for the death of Mrs. Blissett, yes or no? Yes, I feel responsible. I have nothing more to say. Quiet! Silence! Silence! The proceedings are not correct. There's disinformation. Dr. Ivory is the head physician. Therefore, he must answer for whatever takes place in his clinic, even in the operating room. Is it not your duty to supervise everything that goes on in your clinic? Where were you, Dr. Ivory, when the operation was taking place? I wasn't there, unfortunately. I was momentarily called to the phone for an urgent consultation. And Dr. Manson had the pretense to operate on that poor woman immediately. As Dr. Parker, my valid assistant, can confirm. Good. Does Dr. Parker confirm? Yes. Yes, it's true. Mrs. Maria Blissett's death was caused by incompetence. By incompetence and the hastiness of the doctor who operated on her. But it wasn't Dr. Andrew Manson. It was Dr. Ivory. What on earth? He killed her with his own hands. Andrew Manson did everything he could to save that poor woman's life, but it was too late. God be my witness. There you are. It's done. This is outrageous. Silence. <laughs> Order. Order. To be struck off at once, Dr. Ivory. He always had the mania of uniting us, and he did it again. It's his last gift to us. There's another gift, Andrew. A very important one. And in a way, it's also thanks to Denny. That's why I wait until I was here with him. 
to tell you that that I that we Benny come back here I've got him Annie he's always running off he's a little rascal <laughs> he probably takes after his namesake we put our jacket on Denny aha ha, ha. it's an important day today for your daddy he's waiting for us and we mustn't be late Oh, in you go, Annie. <sighs> and now, after all our struggles, after all our suffering, Dr. Andrew Manson's research has finally been recognized by the Minister of Health. The Department of Health that establishes the rules for the mines in the United Kingdom has recognized that the anthracite powder is the main cause of pulmonary tuberculosis in miners. Thanks to our Dr. Manson, working conditions will change and our health will finally be safeguarded. And also, if one of us should get sick, he will be admitted to hospital and reimbursed by the mine administration. Oh! <laughs> Little Denny Manson! You too, Christina, come on up. Me? No! Yes, yes, yes! An applause for the future Dr. Manson! They're applauding him, Andrew! Oh, baby! 